Are we, are we recording? It looks like we're recording. I hope we are recording. There's a hair in my eye. Where are you? I see you out of this eye. But not this eye. This eye. Oh, I felt it. Gotcha. No, wait. Apparently I did. All right, we good. Let's do this. Oh, what is my battery situation? Uh, okay, we good. <laughs> All right. I think we're ready to do this now. Oh, shoot, that hair is back. God. You're in the other eye now. Oh. I did not get you. Where are you? Ha! Ha ha ha! There's the offender. Bye bye. What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to The Nerdy Narrative. On this channel, I like to talk about all sorts of bookish related things in the science fiction, fantasy, horror, manga, comics, literary fiction, classic, nonfiction, you name it. If it's a genre, I'm going to stick my nose into it at some point on this channel. On today's episode of Fun, I am going to do the perfect book challenge. I was recently tagged by Angela from Literature Science Alliance. Her version of the tag I will have in the description box down below. The original creator was Murphy Napier, who I will also have tagged down in the description box below. The gist of this tag is you are creating your perfect book by going through this series of prompts and listing what author you would choose to write that element of your book. When I saw Angela's video, I thought, what a fun idea. This is going to be great. This will be so easy. Boy, was I wrong. When I sat down and started plotting out who I would choose, when I tell y'all I changed my answers for each prompt at least half a dozen times, I'm not kidding. And finally, I just literally said, you know what? I've got a name by every prompt. I'm going to stop thinking about it and overthinking and rethinking. And I'm just going to just... That's it. You know, I'm closing the document out. What's done is done. That's what I'm going to go with. But honestly, most of the authors that I chose for something could go for multiple, if not all of these prompts. I'm not going to sit here and say every author on this list fulfills all of these prompts with perfection. No, they don't. Some have, you know, two or three they're really strong at, but there are a few that I see nothing wrong with whatsoever. And I'm not I'm not going to listen to you if you try to point out their flaws. So just don't because I'm just not going to pay attention to you. <laughs> so prompt number one is prose. What author would I choose to write my prose? Hands down, that's going to go to Robin Hobb. You know, and I know some of you are thinking, Leslie, you've only read a few of her books. How can you know? I just know. Even though the first book that I read by her, Assassin's Apprentice, really just ripped my heart out and shredded my soul. Her prose was beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. She got her start in the 90s where they were very heavy on descriptive writing. But unlike some of those other greats that are around her, Robert Jordan, Terry Goodkind, Terry Brooks, Tolkien, all of those, all of those great classic fantasy writers, Robin Hobb does enough to make it beautiful, but she doesn't get too in depth with it. She doesn't take it overboard. It's not 30 pages describing the type of blue that was on the inside lining of the left sleeves cup. Her books are just masterpieces. If she is one that I literally find nothing wrong with. I find no error in anything she's done that I have read so far, except She will kill an animal, y'all. She will kill an animal. I'm going to tell you that I don't care if you think that's a spoiler or not. To me, that is a trigger warning. You know, a lot of you guys know, I need to know up front if there's going to be some kind of animal cruelty, torture, or death in a book. As long as I know about it up front, I can either squint my way through or skip it all together. She's also pretty dang brutal to her characters. I just, 
I would love to know why. Does anybody know why? Has any has that ever been in an interview with her where somebody asked her like, why do you break your characters the way you do? If you have read that somewhere, please comment down below, fill me in. I just need to know her reasoning for this. Maybe it's to engage the reader. I don't know. I don't know. But woof. <sighs> She's gonna wring your heart out. Prompt number two, world building. What author would I choose to do my world building? The author I would choose, unfortunately, is no longer with us, but I would choose Robert Jordan. What he did with The Wheel of Time is just absolutely classic. It is just wonderful. That is a series that no matter what book I pick up in that series and flip through, I can read about the surroundings. I can visualize it. I feel like it's so 3D. When I read that story, I am in the story. I am standing there watching the characters have the conversations between one another. I am witnessing what is happening, whether a character is about to unleash magic to break a world or simply gripping her skirts and tugging her braid. I am in it. I can visualize the two rivers like I was born and raised there. That just gives me such a great reading experience. When I open those books, when I reread that series, I feel like I'm going home. I just feel like the world that the Wheel of Time takes place on is my home. I am from there. I belong there. While there are tons of authors who write so well that I'm able to imagine things, there's not one I've come across yet for me to just visualize a world that I feel like I came from, I belong in, that feels real to me like that. So Robert Jordan would definitely be who I would tap for my world builder. Prompt number three, magic system. Oh man, I'm gonna go with a new love as far as an author and pick Steven Erickson to write my magic system. Man, I read Gardens of the Moon this year, which was my first book by him, which also was his debut novel, I do believe. And I was so impressed with his magic system. I love how dark and big it was. I love that in the first chapter, we saw some amazing magic thrown around and it just got better and more developed as it went. And even though I've only read the first book so far, I'm about to get to Dead House Gates, but even though I've just read the first book, I love how much magic he used. I loved how big it was, but what I loved most is even when I got to the end of Gardens of the Moon, I felt like we had still not fully explored the extent of what the magic system could actually be capable of. I love the promise that there is something bigger and better on the horizon, and I cannot wait to continue the series and see what else is out there as far as the magic system. Prompt number four, characters. Who would I tap? What author would I tap to write my characters? John Gwynn. Any of you that have been watching this channel for a while or, or are in any of the discords that I am a part of that has a section for John Gwynn, you're all nodding to yourselves and smiling, figuring I was going to say John Gwynn for my characters. Here's why. And I love this man's talent for writing characters because if you've read The Faithful and the Fallen, there are a freaking ton of characters. It took me 300 pages of malice to get them all learned and straight and where I could tell them apart. But he did such a phenomenal job developing them that I felt like I knew everyone. I felt like I was a part of the town. I felt like I knew all these people. I had grown up with them. I knew their parents, their grandparents. I knew every, I knew the names of their pets. He has an amazing talent for writing lovable characters. And I'm telling you, I loved everybody, but maybe three. You've got your good guys, your gray guys, your bad guys. I mean, I loved them all because they were all written so well. I just absolutely adored this man's ability to write characters. Well, after I read The Faithful and the Fallen, I started the second trilogy that take place in the Banished Lands, and I thought, I'm not gonna like this series because I'm gonna be in the Banished Lands, but I'm not gonna have my beloved characters from The Faithful and the Fallen. Am I gonna take that out on my new cast of characters? 
Nope, John Gwynn had me in love with the new cast of characters like that. Prompt number five, plot. Who would I bring in to write my plot? And I know this is a team of authors, but James S.A. Corey, who wrote The Expanse, but I'm gonna tell you guys something. If you haven't read that series or you haven't watched the TV show, it is very complex. It is very well written. The way these two craft a story and just multiple side stories that don't seem like they're connected to the main plot, but they really are. And just the expert way that they bring everything to its culmination is just phenomenal. It is prompt number six, action and battle. So I thought about that for a minute. I almost chose John Gwynn for this because that man can write a battle scene. But I didn't want to double dip on my authors, so I thought about it a little bit more and I thought, who has written a book that I read with some phenomenal battle scenes? Evan Winter. Fires of Vengeance to me just felt like it was constantly. We were in small skirmishes, a big battle that just encompassed the whole book. My heart was constantly racing. The adrenaline was just flooding through me. I read the book in less than 24 hours. It was just so fast paced. There was so much action. I absolutely loved it. And Evan Winter became an auto buy author for me. Prompt number seven, humor. And I really thought about this one and I was like, okay, some books that have made me laugh. And this one I had to go with Andy Weir. I've only read The Martian by him so far. I plan to read Artemis next, but I want to get the audiobook version because Rosario Dawson narrates it. And then he's got Hail Mary coming out later this year. I'm trying to get my hands on that early if I can. But man, The Martian, that's a comfort read for me if I'm being honest with you. The book had me hooked by page two. It had me laughing throughout the entire story. I'm not even kidding. I love the fact that the character Mark Watney kept his good humor where he was just isolated and left behind to survive a certain death, but he kept his humor and he was basically entertaining himself, which I feel like I do that. <laughs> so I just related with him on that level. To me, it is a smile and written format. I definitely keep that book close on hand for if I need something to pick me up after a really traumatic read. And I hope it carries over into his other works. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Prompt number eight is romance. And I'm about to go way off in left field for you guys. I'm gonna pick my favorite Christian fiction author, Francine Rivers. I have read almost every book she's ever written and she can write a romance. What appeals to me about Francine Rivers romances is the fact that they are real. They are authentic. They are ones that could legitimately happen between two people. So many romances that you read about would never in a million years happen. Both characters are perfect and they just look perfect and they're rich and they have magic and I mean, it's just, this would never in a million years happen. But with Francine Rivers, that woman, I wouldn't even call her, I wouldn't even call it writing a romance. I would say writing a love story. Prompt number nine, hero. Okay, you guys knew Brandon Sanderson was gonna make an appearance somewhere in this challenge. Here is where I put him. Again, he qualifies for so many of these prompts. I chose Sanderson for my hero because while all of his characters are just phenomenally written and developed, I feel like he really shines with his heroes. He just really makes them feel like it's a normal person that is just discovering their self and what they're capable of, but he just makes them so inspiring. I will read a Brandon Sanderson book and when I'm done, I am so inspired by the characters. I wanna be a better person. I mean, you just, you just literally cannot do better when you have a hero that inspires you to go out into the real world and be a better person. I mean, he was just the obvious choice for me for this one. And then prompt number 10, villain. I had to go with a new favorite, Joe Abercrombie. I don't know that I've ever read another author who made me fall in love with a villain instantly. You know, and I know I'm not supposed to like him, but I can't help it. He just 
has this way of writing his characters that, and again, he's one, I love all the characters, but unlike John Gwynn, like I hated John Gwynn's villains. The ones that were legit villain, like there was no question about, they were bad, 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 bad. I hated them. Wanted to rip their pages out when I saw them in the book. But with Joe Abercrombie, I couldn't wait to get to the villain's point of view again. I couldn't wait. I just loved him. So yeah, I would have him write my villains because you know what? A villain that you love is the best kind of villain to have in a book because you know what? They just might win. So there you have it. Those are the authors I would love to put in a room together, pitch an idea for my book, assign those elements to them, and just see what they could do with it. It would be so amazing. It would, it would literally be the perfect book. What do you guys think? Do you agree with my choices? Do you feel like some of them need to be moved around? Or did I completely miss somebody that would be better suited for one of these elements? Let me know down below in the comment section. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope your day has gotten off to a great start. I hope the rest of your day is absolutely amazing. I'll see you soon.